Let's do a roll call! Coming fast, coming fast. What is technical rescue? Technical rescue is defined by four main disciplines, which are rope rescue, confined space rescue, trench rescue, and building collapse rescue. Rope rescue is defined as using a rope-based system or building a rope-based system to effect a rescue either on a low angle or a high angle type scenario. For example, a low angle could be a vehicle that goes off of a fairly shallow angled cliff or even like foothill area off the road. We need to bring patients up. On a high angle rescue, we're talking about somebody who may be stranded on the vertical side of a cliff face where we have to either rappel down to them to effect a rescue or climb up to them. And it could encompass just a tremendous span both on height and distance for accessing them via ropes. Confined space rescue is exactly that. It involves rescuing of people from a confined space and that could be as simple as an irrigation tube with if you have children playing down an irrigation tube splashing around in the water and they get too far in and can't get out. It could be an industrial setting where you have tanks. It could be in an agricultural type setting where you have silos. A confined space actually encompasses anything where the space is not considered tenable, it's not a habitable space, and somebody needs to be extracted from it, and that's where the con space rescue portion comes in. It's about 10 feet to the first Trench rescue involves any kind of trench, usually man-made, but it can also be um, a natural trench, but the predominantly our calls involve man-made trenches at construction sites where you'll have a trench collapse, the side of a trench will come in, and if workers aren't using um, safe equipment to help minimize the risk of such a collapse into a trench, they can find themselves entrapped. Dirt is heavy, and the deeper you go into a trench, Per foot, as you go deeper and deeper, the dirt gets heavier and heavier because there's more mass behind that dirt. So you're fighting a lot of physics when you're going in there to do a trench rescue. So building collapse rescue, for us it's as simple as we get a car into a building, we'll have the technical rescue team respond. And obviously our number one focus is life safety on the person if they're still trapped in a vehicle that goes into a building. Once we get them extricated, or while we have to get them extricated, we may have to shore the building up to prevent additional collapse. Uh, it could be something that is uh, caused by an act of nature. We don't really have earthquakes here, but there's definitely a possibility of seismic activity. We do have the risk for tornadoes, especially in some of our eastern areas of the Front Range. And it could be as simple as just a flood causing a collapse or just a shifting of soil on a uh, construction site again could cause a building to collapse, much like the trench scenario on a construction site could have that also with a building collapse. Guide stop. stop. Bane down. Out on guide. At West Metro Fire Rescue, we require all of our members of the technical rescue team to go through our own 11-day course. It encompasses four days of rope rescue, two days of confined space rescue, two and a half days of building collapse rescue, and two and a half days of trench rescue. Our members, once they go through, are also encouraged to teach there every year as we bring more and more students through the program because you can learn a lot by teaching. In addition, at Company 14 and Company 10, we require company level training and that kind of allows us to continue our own continuing education with the, each discipline, find out what the latest and greatest is for each discipline, and kind of keep us up on our skills. These are low frequency, but have very high risk events. So while they don't happen that often, it's very important that when they do happen, we are ready to go.